In the 1960s, the first full decade of commercial jet travel, the number of passenger miles flown throughout the world doubled. Already, air terminals are hard pressed to handle the enormous increase in the demand of their facilities. During the 1970s, passenger demand will increase to three times the present level. On the ground, passengers face growing delays at baggage and inspection facilities. Ground transportation is often inadequate. There is an urgent need for new airports, expanded airports, better designed and better equipped, to cope with man's increasing need to travel farther and faster. Since the early days of powered flight, Canadians have depended on air transportation for exploration, development and communication. This vast land with just over 20 million people stretches 4,000 miles from the Atlantic to the Pacific, encompassing a territory of nearly 4 million square miles. Today the Department of Transport controls a network of 1,600 airports. It owns and operates 95, of which nine are international airports. This chain of major terminals provides a vital link between all regions of Canada and with the world. Edmonton's medium volume international airport was opened in 1963. Ample land was set aside to prevent encroachment and to allow for runway expansion. The separate services building contains all the heating, air conditioning and emergency power generating equipment for the airport. At Winnipeg International, meteorology services, telecommunications and air traffic control are housed in a separate administration building. Loading bridges designed and built in Canada have been installed for passenger handling efficiency. As at many airports throughout the world, passengers collect their baggage at a carousel. This system was invented and developed in Canada. Regina is a typical regional airport, connecting with international airports in Canada and the United States. This airport, like many others, was built from standardized plans developed by Canadian consultants working with the Department of Transport. The terminal building at Moncton was redesigned and extended in 1953. This airport serves much of Canada's Atlantic coast and occasionally is used as a backup for Halifax. Halifax International on Canada's east coast was cut out of dense forest and opened in 1960.
Recently, when the main runway was extended and strengthened, a new Canadian-built centerline lighting system was installed to allow ICAO Category 2 operations. A similar system at Toronto was the first in operation in North America. As Canadian expertise in airport design and construction developed, a major industry grew to supply equipment and products required for modern terminal installations. Canada can supply complete subsystem packages for runway and airport lighting, radar and telecommunications, instrument landing systems, and information systems. This Canadian information board is installed at the new National Airlines Terminal in New York. The Gander Air Traffic Control Center on Canada's east coast controls all transatlantic air traffic originating in North America. Present Canadian radar systems are being replaced by a new alphanumeric radar developed by the Department of Transport showing numerically each aircraft's altitude and identification as well as past and present positions. Canada's electronics industry builds equipment ranging from compact avionics to aircraft simulators and satellites and has supplied telecommunications for over 114,000 miles of airways in Canada. Canadian hydraulic lift vehicles are used by Pan American Airways to service their 747s and their regular fleet. Canadian mobile crash rescue equipment is in use at airports around the world. Canadian snow removal equipment can throw two and a half meter deep snow a distance of 60 meters. Toronto's control tower is separate from the terminal and provides excellent visibility. The Iroquois at Toronto was already operating above its design capacity of 4 million passengers a year. The 20-year master plan for Toronto forecasts 8 million passengers per year by 1971. Master planning is a key element in effective airport design, undertaken in Canada by consultants working with the Department of Transport. These consultants are often consortia of several companies, each familiar with one of the disciplines associated with airport planning. In recent years, their skills have been in demand in many countries. Abu Dhabi, a sheikdom in the Trucial States, has developed quickly with the advent of large-scale oil operations and needed an airport. A Canadian consortium was retained to design and build the airport in its entirety. The town of Abu Dhabi and the airport are located on an island in the Gulf. The bridge to the mainland was included in the airport project. A 
A temporary customs facility was provided, enabling full use to be made of the completed runway while the terminal was being built. The climate is hot and humid. The average daily maximum temperature is 115 degrees Fahrenheit. Local building materials were used wherever possible, although sand had to be imported for concrete, as the abundant local supply was unsuitable for this purpose. In Ceylon, the Katanayaki Airport near Colombo was opened in 1968. The airport was jointly financed by the Canadian and Ceylonese governments and completely designed and constructed by Canadian firms. High-intensity runway, taxiway, and apron lighting had to be treated against fungus growth caused by the high humidity. Local labor was employed on the project. Sand was obtained from the nearby beaches and rivers. The airport manager was trained in Canada while the terminal was completed. In the Caribbean, the air facilities in a network of islands. Mountainous terrain in this area often results in difficult approaches and short runways. Canadian-made twin turbo otters are used extensively for inter-island transport. These aircraft have short takeoff and landing capability steep angles of climb and descent, and low noise levels. Canada is developing larger versions of stall aircraft for use between stall ports downtown and airports and between cities. One answer to the congestion problem in large cities. is a recognized leader in the development of complete systems for stall ports, which may in the future carry much of the world's short-haul civil aviation. Canadian consultants won the preliminary master planning contract for an international Scandinavian airport near Copenhagen. 
The Scandinavian countries accepted the Canadian proposal to extend the island of Saltholm for the new airport. This will place all approaches over water, eliminate noise problems, and allow for expansion. Canadian firms also won the contracts for the master planning of the new Fiumicino Airport in Rome and for development of Galleon Airport in Rio de Janeiro. In Canada, work is in progress on one of the great international airports for the age of jumbo and supersonic aircraft. While selecting the site, the planners considered the airport's role in the economy and life of the whole region. At Saint Scholastique, northwest of Montreal, 85,000 acres have been acquired, allowing the development of industrial, residential and agricultural areas to be controlled according to the master plan. Several runway layouts were considered. These and all facilities needed to move passengers from the city to the aircraft were simulated on computers to determine optimum design. The initial terminal unit is designed to handle predicted traffic to 1980. Terminal and runway expansion will be phased in as needed from 1980 to the year 2000 to accommodate all foreseen types of aircraft. Vancouver International, Canada's most recently completed major terminal, exemplifies the latest developments and concepts in moving travelers quickly, safely, and in comfort. In the next decade, billions of dollars will be invested throughout the world to accommodate the growing demand for fast, convenient and safe air services. Many of the ideas, the plans and the equipment for this expansion will come from Canada, a vast country where aviation has been an important way of life for over half a century. <laughs> 